Hi there. I hope you're doing well and that whatever day it is for you, that you find it to be in one way or another worthwhile and engaging. Today, I wanted to go ahead, if I may, and talk about coffee and books. Um, more specifically, uh, to ponder the question, what is a cup of coffee and how to define it? This question was directly prompted by a uh, current read of mine, Sarah Bakewell's um, at the Existentialist Cafe, uh, subtitled Freedom, Being, and Apricot Cocktails. Side note, I have never tried apricot cocktails, but they sound delicious. It's a book on existentialism, uh, more specifically existentialist thinkers of, I believe, the 1930s. So we have Simone de Beauvoir and Jean-Paul Sartre. Broadly speaking, the author also explores the precursors to existentialist thinkers, and that, it turns out, is uh, phenomenology. And my goodness, I'm going to end up screwing up the pronunciation for this term at one point in this video or another. Um, I, I hate how the word is pronounced, but I love the concept behind it. And so I wanted to talk a bit about that, um, and it directly relates to our question, what is coffee? Bakewell explores and gives us a taste of what phenomenology as a philosophy entails. Uh, not only is Bakewell a very lovely and engaging writer, but she also defines uh, phenomenology and philosophy and the terms that accompany it in such a down-to-earth way that it, uh, it truly is refreshing. She also manages to remind us that phenomenology is at heart a practice, and uh, we can make phenomenology out of nearly everything. And so she dedicates a few pages to showing us how. But first, phenomenology, though difficult to pronounce, simply boils down to describing something as it presents itself against the backdrop of our personal experience, um, rather than what it may or may not be in reality. So then, back to coffee. Uh, Bakewell lays out three different paths one might take when describing or defining coffee. One might, for example, describe it in encyclopedia terms or against a scientific or factual background. So for instance, the botany that's associated with coffee or the chemistry or how it might interact with our bodies or the historical context of how coffee came about and uh, the global trade that's associated with it. So that's one way of describing it. Or one might describe it in the way Marcel Proust describes his cookies uh, by way of sentimental descriptions and uh, one's personal memory associations. Or one might instead go down the path of phenomenology to capture the experience of it all, the aroma, the flavor, the sensations as they unfold for the coffee drinker. And if we do that, Bakewell ensures us that we are engaging in phenomenology, more specifically the bracketing out of any uh, extra fluff or add-ons and instead focusing on a judgment-free assessment of what it is that's before us, um, casting aside any preconceived notions we might have about the world or our surroundings, effectively, again, bracketing out anything but the phenomenon itself. And it turns out we do this when uh, going out wine tasting or when trying to explain medical maladies or symptoms to a doctor, for example. Bakewell on page 43 in a very lovely passage explains to us what the practice of phenomenology and uh, the study of it might entail. And she writes, quote, One might never finish adequately describing a cup of coffee, yet it is a liberating task. It gives us back the world we live in. It works most effectively on the things we may not usually think of as material for philosophy. A drink, a melancholy song, a drive, a sunset, an ill-at-ease mood, a box of photographs, a moment of boredom. It restores this personal world in its richness, arranged around our own perspective, yet usually no more mo noticed than the air. And she goes on to also explain another thing I find intriguing with the study of uh, phenomenology. And I hadn't encountered the term phenomenology and had not known about it as a study or a branch of philosophy until I encountered this book. So I'm incredibly thankful to her for explaining it in such, a, um, such an easy to understand and inviting way. She also writes, there is another side effect. It ought in theory to free us from ideologies, political and otherwise. 
in forcing us to be loyal to experience and to sidestep authorities who try to influence how we interpret that experience, phenomenology has the capacity to neutralize all the isms around it. From scientism to religious fundamentalism to Marxism to fascism, all are to be set aside. They have no business intruding on the things themselves. This gives phenomenology a surprisingly revolutionary edge if done correctly. This notion of it being a liberating exercise was very intriguing to me. Uh, the day I read this passage, I, that very morning, uh, took out my notebook and my pen and jotted away in my morning pages and tried to define for myself what is a cup of coffee. And so I hope you can treat this as an invitation for you to also explore and attempt to define what coffee means to you. Um, it, if you're not a coffee drinker or would rather not, you could go ahead and use nearly anything to engage in this type of very fruitful exercise. Uh, for instance, I would down the line love to do a write-up of the phenomenology of reading and what that might mean. So with that said, what is a cup of coffee? Hmm. I will say a cup of coffee is a question mark promptly followed by an exclamation point. Let me break this down a bit. Um, to me, it seems like a question mark because every time I engage in drinking coffee, um, it brings with it, if it's good coffee, a layer of complexity that I'm then eager to explore further, whether it be through taste, uh, the taste of coffee. And I am not well versed in any of the terminology that the coffee world employs. I have no idea. Is it, I don't even know if it's called notes or something else. But, um, but the various layers of the flavors that you might uncover when drinking coffee or the various layers of a person you might discover when drinking alongside them in conversation. Um, that all is a very appealing question mark when I begin a coffee experience, and then it's followed by an eagerness, an exclamation point, a willingness to be more curious, to go outside a bit um, out of one's comfort zone, or in my case, put down my guard a bit and to uh, become less reserved and more eager to find uh, some form in one way or another, an answer or uh, come closer to finding an answer or discovering something uh, there that's worth discovering. It beckons, it invites. And hmm, I'm usually a tea drinker. So this is interesting. I think I'm and becoming a coffee lover. It's it's straightforward, cut to the chase. Um, let's get real. Uh, type of type of emotion that arises from from coffee. Each sip comes with um, a jolt of energy, but also at the cost of finding a loophole in the way that Bakewell distinguishes the Proustian approach to defining coffee and the phenomenological <laughs> approach to defining coffee. Um, I suppose also when I drink coffee, there are moments where it takes me back to the sentimental aspect of coffee. And that is to say, um, I'm reminded of something. I'm reminded, for instance, it could be um, a little bit of backdrop. In Armenian households, um, you're often taught to prepare coffee and serve your guests coffee as a sign of respect and hospitality and care. And so from an early age, I learned how to make uh, coffee on the stove. And my when my grandpa would visit, for instance, I would make him some coffee and um, in a little espresso cup and a saucer. That's usually how it's done in Armenian households. And uh, I managed to pour it. I would always manage to pour it into the cup. But when transporting the coffee from the kitchen to the backyard or wherever he was seated, um, I would always end up spilling it. And I distinctly remember him mentioning on a few occasions uh, don't be nervous. Don't be afraid. It, the more you look at it, uh, the more you're bound to spill. So just look away. Don't look at it. And my overanalytical mind always attempted to find some sort of meaning behind that. Um, I don't think I ever did. But <laughs> so on a few occasions, uh, when I'm sipping coffee, I hearken back to that moment, to those moments and that particular memory. More recently, coffee serves as an ode to camaraderie and to the bliss of uh, discovering and reveling in New York City and the coffee shop scene there and being able to share a cup of coffee with friends uh, old and new and with every sip discovering something 
about them, a gem that they were kind enough to share with me about themselves or their journey in life. I tend to also associate coffee with, um, with, with a coffee shop and being seated, reading in a coffee shop or, uh, hanging out with a friend. Um, so those sentimental portions do pop up when at, at certain times when I am drinking coffee. So I do wonder how much of phenomenology truly is distinct from, from that sentimental, but I digress. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this could perhaps serve as a humble invitation for you to also, for yourself, define what coffee might mean or what anything you would like to explore uh, in your day-to-day -day world, what that might mean to you. How would you define it in phenomenological, <laughs> phenomenological terms? I will be continuing to read this gem of a book and highly recommend that you do as well. I was, a I, I was able to manage to convince a few people on Instagram to grab this book. And so I'm super, super happy that they've decided to join uh, me in exploring this book. Um, I also, I think, want to go ahead and make this a bit of fun. Um, I'd love to gift one of you a copy, a new copy of the book or a Kindle uh, version of it, if you do have Kindle or prefer that. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll select someone from the group of people who comment below, it, um, below this video, and I'll select one person and I'll go ahead and send you whatever your preference might be of the, a copy of this book. Um, so yeah, I'll do that. Uh, uh, so if you're kind enough to go ahead and comment, uh, down below, I'd love to, uh, send someone a copy of this book. Um, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and I hope you stick around for uh, a few more updates. I don't know if I'll just go ahead and do a general book review once I'm done with the book or if I'll do it by, uh, piecemeal. So either way, I hope you stick around and I hope you found this useful. Mm, yeah. Until next time. Bye.